look at that. Cottontail Eagle Eye is in the shop. She's going to be here until June 21st at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with typical shop reset. So I figured I'd show you guys one of my favorite loadouts with her. Now, there are a couple of ways to run her. Let's talk about what we got here. First and foremost, you need her in the lead because you want those egg bombs to do as much as possible. Blast from the Past is actually very important for two reasons. One, for health because Saurian Instinct is just healing you every single time you phase shift. Then you've got Saurian Focus, which is pretty much essential for getting enough energy to phase shift as much as you're going to be phase shifting. Then we need to have Flash AC and support. I recently showed him in the lead, so I don't know if that video is actually it is up on the channel as of recording this, so link to that video down below. And that's a much, much faster loadout just for speed, but this is a nice combo deal. So we've also got phase forward in support, which is now 60% in support instead of 30. Recent update to that, which is kind of interesting. She used to do 140% in the lead, but that was actually over the speed cap of the game. So for all of these years, Recon Scout in the lead has not actually really buffed your movement speed, which is interesting, but now it's 60, 60, and then it's three seconds on the five. So now the one thing that's kind of a variable is face scout Jess. This is what I was talking about, where you can increase your maximum charges by one, or you could use in and outlander where every six eliminations within 10 seconds using phase shift gives you one charge. I think phase of confuse is a lot more easy and consistent, but I'm just going to stick with her because it's a lot more easy and uh, hop in game. Check it out. Before we hop in, I want to mention that we're running this in an 88 zone specifically for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, the rewards are effectively the same as a 140 zone. And two, those egg bombs are not going to be doing that much. It's much better for speed running right through an 88 zone where you're going to get basically the same rewards and it'll be a lot more effective. All right, going in with no team coordination at all. I actually have no idea what they're running. So, oh, what, what the, what, what, what was that? What are you running the same thing as you tried it out, Cottontail, Cottontail. It's weird yeah. because I ran out of phase shifts a lot faster than I expected. And then it, it triggers at the end of your phase shift, right? So I have to dash into it. Okay, no, they, they come out behind me after I after I phase shift. Okay, yeah, 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 that's kind of the, the key. So it looks like we are running out of phase shifts often enough. Uh, maybe phase and confused would have been the way to go. Or no, in and out land would have been the way to go for that extra charge. Yeah, I was hoping I'd be able to spam this enough to use it over and over and over. Maybe no Happy Holidays is the way. But then where do we get our energy? You know, do we hope that we get, um, hope that we get like Fall in Love Ranger Jonesy eliminations? I don't really know, because this is the idea. The idea is that we can phase shift nice and quick and then dash straight into a monolith and then, I don't know, pickaxe it, I guess. Do another phase shift there and it breaks really easily. And that's, again, why I'm doing the lower level zones. If you guys have never seen this build before, you might be surprised that I queued an 88, but really, you're not going to be doing that much to the monoliths, especially in a 140 zone. Forget about it. So, yeah, it has to be toned down just to make this build work. But I think it's fun to be able to dash around and do damage in the meantime is a really cool combo. And I, uh... I like to showcase these builds because I uh, I get excited when a hero is in the shop and I think ooh this might be a better hero than people realize and I get to show the noobs that maybe Cottontail is worth picking up that's uh, that's a good thing to do and I've got a lot of comments recently people asking me why dungeons is such a big deal uh, speed running through these gives you tickets and gold gold is obviously great for everything in the event shop I see those red dots don't kill me don't kill me and then tickets are great for opening llamas because with llamas you can just open lots and lots of llamas you get lots of heroes and weapons and you you can recycle those for schematic XP and, and training manuals and everything in between, and that can be really, really useful for everybody. I open llamas myself. I'm a pretty end game player, and I, I of all people, appreciate being able to recycle those for training manuals. They're my main source of training manuals, and speedrunning dungeons, for that reason, is, is super good. Tickets turn into llamas, llamas turn into all sorts of good stuff. Little tip for Inferno, by the way. Archer and I are about to jump into the ground here, and normally the key can spawn on the right here, and you can kind of skip through this little door, little, little tip there. Then you can kind of crouch up, grab it here, or grab it up there. Archer's going to the other location where we uh, we got this time around. So now we just gotta speed run to the door, which we can easily do, because we can just dash over a couple of times, build so they don't attack me, and hopefully get through nice and safe. All right, another good room here. So this is where Minigun starts to kind of take over. I mean, the first few stages are pretty good for Cottontail, but at a certain point, it falls off pretty hard, and it might even be worth considering, like, adding a, like a, a anti-material charge bonus in the, in the support. I don't know if that'll make a huge difference or not. <laughs> I think Minigun is typically the best way to go for the reasons you're seeing here, but I don't know. I think it's fun to make use of Eagle Eye, even if she's not exactly a, a top meta pick. It's just uh, having a bit of fun. That's exactly what these, these fun videos are all about, to show you loadouts that are a bit off the wall and uh, might be a good way to change pace if you're somebody who might be bored of the usual stuff. 
All right, here we are, the dungeon boss. Now, this is where things get a little a little iffy for our, our friend here. I could throw down all my Outlander abilities, but oh my cow, look at him go. I'm not gonna be the one doing damage, and thankfully my teammates were there to back me up because I was not gonna be very helpful at all. That run went by really fast, and I actually held a vote on Twitch, link down below if you guys ever wanna be a part of these, and a lot of people wanted me to run the lab, so I'm gonna tweak this loadout a bit and hop into the lab. Okay, a couple of changes to the build. First, we're gonna be trying Happy Holidays instead of Blast from the Past, and then our energy generation will be Fuel for the Fallen, which will hopefully generate enough energy to keep it going. He is more energy per second than Cell, Healthy if he's active, so that's kind of nice. And then we got in an Outlander, which should hopefully give us more phase shift charges. I don't know how many eliminations we'll be getting, but I'm gonna try it out either way. All right, Q in the lab. When was the last time I ran the lab? Oh man, the cooldown on these uh, flat or these charges is a lot better. Of course, we don't get any energy pylons, which kind of sucks. But you know, being an Outlander means I can zip over here super fast, and then I can. Enjoy. You know what I should be doing is for movement, I should be enjoying that 60% movement bonus for three seconds. And then, yeah, kind of staggering it that way because I can dash, sprint. Uh huh, uh huh. And then when the three seconds is up, dash again and then sprint. A 60% is kind of a nice bonus. And uh, because these models are really spread out, I'm just going to take the liberty of dashing to the end and opening the door because I don't think I'm going to be able to help that much. All right, unlocking the door and going through. So. I'm gonna just try to stagger it. Every three seconds, I'll go ahead and pop a phase shift. That'd be the way to go. Max, oh no, I tried to slide to maximize my 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 mobility, but I, I failed. This build takes a bit of practice. Okay, all right, all right, here we go. Let's see, how is Happy Holidays helping me, huh? Okay, got that taken care of. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. I hear a minigun, so I'm not really gonna be able to help much but that actually did pretty good damage it looked like all the bombs hit each time i did that which was super good if you guys ever get lost in the lab by the way these purple icons are what you want to look for they tell you exactly where to go and these are urns it's you know quote unquote urns and then of course the uh, blue glow in the lab is actually really good for um weakening the mini boss i am again serving the role as somebody who can kind of break monoliths but also be the outlander on the team so seeing as i got two of the monoliths i'm letting my teammates get the third one and once again i'm waiting by the door now because of the way that outlanders play where you sort of race to the end i have to request that if you're watching this video you do not try this loadout in a public lobby you should always be an outlander with like a team of people who know what you're doing because outlanders can be very um solo i don't know the right way to put it like selfish where you're not really contributing as much with the uh the monoliths there should be like a team plan going into it if you're gonna run the outlander role uh that's the the polite way to go of course i'm with a team of people who know exactly what i'm doing with the video so it's it's a lot more of a uh, an organized situation Ooh, getting some in and outlander kills there we go that'll be my energy generation but the the lab we've been struggling with this the whole time where the monoliths spawn in really weird locations that I'm not super familiar with. The reason I don't run the lab that much is because it's huge and it's not really worth the size. There aren't that many challenges associated with the lab and it's not it's not worth how much extra time you spend defeating the lab. So I oftentimes find myself skipping this this area, unfortunately. I was super excited when the lab came to the game. Like, oh my god, we got a new dungeon. That's super exciting. And then it ended up being so huge that it was almost never worth running it. And that that was really unfortunate because, you know, when it comes to tickets and gold, like I said earlier, <clears throat> the name of the game is to go as fast as possible and do as many dungeons as you can. And when the lab takes minutes longer than any other uh, dungeon and doesn't really give you anything more for that time, it's hard to justify running it other than the novelty of it being a fun and new exciting area. Obviously, if you're getting something like Chaos Agent, that makes sense, but when the lab first came out, we ran it 140, I made a YouTube video on it, I'll link it down below if you're curious, I went ahead, ran a couple more times, got my Chaos Agent, and then hardly ever touched it again. Ooh, that's a nice little spot to just sort of get into the corner and, and break it that way. Can I afford a punch? There we go, easy peasy. And then I can even throw a drone, actually. That could be a nice way to just uh, farm energy. So that drone will be killing enemies, which will be activating uh, Fallen Love Ranger. I'm looking for these little posts, like I said. If you ever get lost in the lab, look for those purple posts, and they will show you exactly where to go. There's a monolith over there. There's an area that spawns over here, which is just mist monsters. I'm trying to be careful not to 
totally waste my phase shift. Here, actually, I can wait for the enemies to come around so I can just kill them in the process. If you can kill the enemies and the monolith at the same time, hopefully you'll be able to generate enough phase shift charges and energy to keep the whole show going because that's kind of the name of the game. That's why Flash AC is typically recommended because you can run him in the lead with plenty of phase shift cooldown, so Happy Holidays is not necessary. Then you got Blast in the Past with uh, Saurian Focus to just generate far more energy than you could possibly hope to use. That's not actually accurate. <laughs> you can you can definitely run out of energy with that build. Just ask my uh, Crow's Nest uh, Blackout AR video. That, that build definitely ran out of energy, but the, the energy pylons go a long way with that, so... That is something that is an option that is not here. Got the mini gunners behind me taking care of the mini boss, which is super nice. Our quest just went from four to uh, three of four on the uh, mini boss elimination quest. Every five mini bosses, you get a bunch of tickets, and that is a big deal, and it's uh, really really nice. But we looks like we got the boss fight down here, right? So. Hopefully Archer's 16 blue glow will go to good use here. All right, so you can see that minigun is doing very little damage uh, in reference to, you know, how much health he could be going out. Now it's going much faster, much faster. As Archer's putting in the blue glow, he's going down and down and down and down, and it's super easy, barely inconvenient. So there you go. There's the uh, Cottontail Eagle Eye build, kind of a fun build. It's nothing top meta. You're not going to use this to break any world record speed runs, but if you wanted to take advantage of a hero you might not have ever tried before, or if you're just trying to break the norm and have a fun time, she's a highly recommended hero, and this build will uh, hopefully contribute to a decent time. Thank you guys for watching. Twitch link down below. I'll see you guys in the next one, and uh, yeah, bye. And then...